Why did Erickson decide on 10,000 hours as the amount of practice needed to assume expertise? Well, it's fairly straightforward, actually. What Erickson found in his seminal study was that if you looked at the age of the experts he was looking at, uh, violinists and piano players, and you looked at the hours of practice, there was a difference at 10,000 hours. And that difference looks sort of like this. Basically, he started from about age four and five here, and he went to about age 20 over here. And what he found in terms of hours spent practicing was the following. He had three key groups. His music teachers, by the time they'd reached 20, had sort of gotten to just around about 4,000 to 5,000 hours of practice. His next group were people that were good. They were better than uh, music teachers, but they weren't world-class professionals. And they improved as well. And they basically got up and they'd sort of doubled that and they'd gotten to about 8,000 hours of practice. Now his top group, the best piano players in the world and the best violinists, they basically went up and when they were at age 20, they had done 10,000 hours of practice. And that's where that number comes from. The fact that the best group at age 20 had 10,000 hours of practice. And as far as Erickson could tell, that was the only thing that separated them from the other musicians and the other two groups.